Well hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today it's uh, Sunday, earlier on in the week we picked up the 135, that's all back in the yard now, back in the shed and looking great. So recently we've been getting ready for the Norfolk show, um, it's been taking quite a lot of organisation, all of the things you think about at a show, um, such as getting straw bales, getting rope to go around the 135, getting a marquee, getting refreshments, getting some posters and banners and things like that has been challenging, um, but we've almost got it all done. So I'm just setting up to the top of the yard. We're just gonna flail mow this field off because the weed wiper's in the shed and it's, it's got a broken pump, which we've just got the parts for to rebuild it. So I'm just gonna take out some rag work because the equine people get onto me about that and if horses eat it, it's a nightmare. So that's what we're doing today, tidying up rag work in fields and then we'll come along and spray it in July time when it starts to grow back. Now on another note, last night I went to watch the new Top Gun. Uh, it's a really good film. It, it had a bit of everything. If you haven't seen it, do go and ha watch it. It was it had happy moments, it had sad moments, it had a bit of everything. And um, sometimes it's nice to take a break away from farming um, and go and watch something different. So that was a really good film with a good storyline, which you don't seem to get anymore these days. So, so go and check that film out if you haven't seen it. Absolutely brilliant. This time of the year to keep on top of ragwort, but uh, we've managed to play that off and get it ready so we can spray it in the next couple of weeks. And what else has been going on on the farm recently? Well, the gator we've got at the moment, the uh, the back off because we I was going along the other day back from the marshes and the door came off on the back, so we've just fixed that. That's in the workshop at the moment. And uh, the actual gator itself, as you can see, looks a bit different because it's got the back off, but it keeps overheating at the moment. So if recently. I've um, been trying to diagnose why it keeps overheating on the road. It's got something to do in the front with the fuse box, I think, because we, we did have a problem with the coolant leaking out of it. There's a, a pipe there which sometimes bursts. Um, but I found out now, this is where the fuses are for this machine. And um, what's happening is I think there's a fan um, which keeps tripping off. So the fan's not coming on because of one of these fuses. But as you can see, there's no fuse diagram in there. So I'm gonna to have to find out about the fuses for this gator and then we can hopefully change the fuse and it will stop overheating. Other than that though, it hasn't been too bad this gator but one of those things. And then here's the, the back which has been in the workshop for the last, last week. If you have a look down here, this is what the problem was. Some rivets on this side had snapped and the doors had come off. So we drilled, drilled a hole um, and now we've got all of the bolts on the back there, so these doors can't come off anymore. They're nylon, nylon locks there, so that's brilliant. I'm gonna put that on tomorrow. It's just gonna take a couple of people, although it doesn't look like it, it's blooming heavy, um, this box. So I'll get someone to, to help give his hand, put this on tomorrow. No, it should last a good while longer yet, so nice little job done. And then in the post here, we've got, this is a, a piece here for the pump. For our logic weed wiper, you can see the old one's broken unfortunately. And that's the replacement part, so we've got to put that on. That's a nice little job to do to fix the pump. So take that off and get the new one on. And then in the shed here, this is what we're now calling the, uh, well, the, the baby Jesus. Um, we've, we've got it back on the trailer because we're going to take this down in the next couple of days to the show. And um, yeah, it's been great having it. It really has been um, nice to finally have a look at it in the shed. And there was a couple of people who have asked in the comments why we haven't bought uh, and the new modern equivalent of Massey Ferguson's, um, I suppose, to match the 135. And a couple of years ago, we did look at the, uh, the Massey Ferguson 7718, if anybody remembers that. And I thought that was a really nice tractor. It was great, drove great on the road, high speed, it was Vario, it was a lovely, smart tractor to drive. Um, but I just felt that the 6R John Deere's were just better finished tractors at the time and, and it was just smoother to drive. So that's why we went for the, um, for the 6R in the end, those few years ago. I, I really wish that Massey would make an equivalent of a 6R these days. I know the, 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 new, the new tractors are good. Um, personally, I, I felt as though the, the 6Rs are a really well-rounded tractor. Um, I think, you know, back in the day, the 135s and Massey Ferguson back in the day were making some great stuff. They had a great run at, at Banner Lane in Coventry all those years ago. 
Um, and I suppose the modern equivalent would be Fence and John Deere's and you know tractors like that on that level. Um, some of the top tractors nowadays, and of course back in the day, the, the top tractors were the the Massey Ferguson's. So um, and everyone wanted Massey, and then it went to I believe Ford, and then John Deere came in, and and, and things change. You know things change all the time. Um, so I mean every tractor maker out there, all the brands make good tractors at different points in time, and there's different models which stand out more than others. Um, but it all depends on personal preference really, and, and what you like. And it, back in the 60s and the 70s. Um, a lot of people liked Massey Ferguson for what they were churning out. They were producing some great tractors and there were so many tractors built in the UK and England and now there's hardly any tractors made here unfortunately. There's of course New Holland at Basildon in Essex and near London. Other than that we're, we're not building that many tractors here in this country anymore. So maybe it's a, a sign of the times, um, I don't know. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of tractors seem to be made in Germany nowadays and other parts of the world. So that's what's happened, it's the way it's gone. Um, and I doubt that tractor manufacturing will ever truly return to the UK. So it's all gone overseas now, unfortunately. Um, and something else which you guys have been asking me about is how much does the restoration cost? Well, the total restoration, when I was originally quoted, we, we were originally going to go up to about £5,000 for the restoration. We went a little bit over that, and it, it has been worthwhile because the finish is great. Um, but it, it, it did go quite a bit over and, and in the end it was, it was about £3,500 to rebuild the engine and the transmission and all of the mechanical parts um, and then it went up to about nine, £9,500 for all of the cosmetic work um, and everything has been gone through um, to such a high standard and the parts have all been sourced mostly from Germany um, and I was very adamant that we could get all the, the best quality parts to make it last longer and back in the day, the paint, was, the paint quality was good when the 135s were made, um, but paint technology has moved on so much since then, and all of the bearings and the seals and every, all the parts of a tractor you don't think about have really moved on as well. So we've used really high quality parts for this, um, so that it, it truly is a work of art and a, and a quality item. So that's the total cost. It has really um, cost a lot, about just over 12,000 pounds all in. Um, and thanks to you guys for watching Goldie's Farm for all these years we've managed to pay it, so huge thanks to you guys. And um, now it's on to the next tractor. What would you like to see on the channel? The next tractor to buy, restore, and do and do up. Um, I mean, we've looked at the, um, the 35X, the Grey Ferguson. We've got the 65, the Massey Ferguson 65, which is in at the moment. That has a blown head gasket, which has got to be. Uh, we found out the other day it's got to be skimmed. Um, and once we skim it down, we can put a new gasket on it and get it back up and running. Um, and then, you know, that might be another one which we want to restore. I quite like it, to be honest, that tractor in, in original clothing, um, but we might fully restore that one. Uh, another tractor I've been speaking about as well was one from many years ago, which was the John Deere 6300, which I used to love. I used to have one of those on the farm. Had it for about 10 years, and that was a great tractor. It was only 30K, um, but it was so simple, and you could really, you know, you could fix it. Um, whereas our new 6R is, is a great tractor, but it does take a little bit more um, time and, and a laptop to get it fixed, that one. Um, so maybe a 6300, maybe a slightly more modern 10 series with a suspension like a 6310 would be nice, a 6410. Of course, like all of these things nowadays, they seem to be hen's teeth to get hold of. So maybe a John Deere, um, I'll let you, let you decide. What, what do you think, what sort of tractor would you like to see on the channel next? Another tractor to join the 135 and sort of the start really of the Ollie's Farm Classic Tractor Collection. So leave a comment in the comment section. Um, I hope you're having a great weekend, whatever you're up to, and do come down next week to the Royal Norfolk Show where you'll be served some refreshments and you'll be able to see this wonderful 135 on the stand at the Norfolk Showground. So thanks for watching, enjoy your day, whatever you're up to, and I will catch you on the next one. Click here to subscribe to the channel and click here to watch another Ollie's Farm video.